Hi, my name is Colin, and this is my thesis entitled Performance of Commercial Off-the-Shelf MEMS Vibration Measurement System for Machine Condition Monitoring. And I'd like to thank my supervisors, Melinda and Ben, for the great continued support over the year. It has been a great and interesting journey for me. The industry is using condition monitoring to protect and manage their assets because this allows them to use to optimize uh, maintenance actions that allow them to prevent equipment breakdowns, unplanned maintenance, and even shutdowns. This allows them to save money and costs and time. And they use a piezoelectric vibration measurement system, PVMS, which costs at least $20,000 and due to this high cost, we're looking at alternatives that would that are low cost, and we're driven by the fact that industry is also moving towards a wireless condition monitoring system. And what this is about is comparing three vibration measurement systems, where of of different prices: the blue box, the slam stick, and the, and the piezo. And think of it as if you're comparing a ruler, a vernier caliper, and a micrometer. It all has different cost, costs and precision, but sometimes a ruler would be enough for an application to, to measure length. To do machine condition monitoring, we use a piezoelectric accelerometer that is wired with a data acquisition unit and a receiver. And this system is what I would call piezoelectric vibration measurement system, VMS, PBMS. Again, the problem is due to its higher costs and the wiring requirement because you you would have existing equipment represented by the yellow and the gray line the yellow blocks and the gray lines you would have to minimize interference here and we have a contender technology that we can use which is the mems and we have commercial off the shelf microcontrollers where we can interface mems sensors with it you would probably have a smartphone with you and you would have a MEMS accelerometer with it to measure the orientation of your phone. And it's low cost and we can mic our own vibration measurement system using that. So it, it uses an accelerometer, a processor and a battery in a single enclosure. And we have a way of transferring our data And what this MEMS VMS or MEMS system can do is that we can eliminate the wiring, we can have a low cost equipment and it's portable. But then we know for a fact that the piezoelectric would still be good in, in a lot of cases. We wanna find out what would happen now or how, how would the MEMS system compare with a piezoelectric. And we have a literature review that summarizes two main studies and the first one being there is a comparable result between a MEMS accelerometer and a piezoelectric one in shakers, motors and CNC machines but the but the limitation of these studies is that they didn't compare it as a VMS or as a system which doesn't include all these microprocessor and data transfer methods. On the other hand there is a second set of studies that address the implementation of these MEMS VMS in a single portable enclosure, but they didn't compare this with a piezoelectric VMS, nor they didn't address wireless transmission issues in data losses. And what this research does is to answer these two gaps in the literature wherein we want to compare a MEMS VMS with a piezoelectric VMS. And we want to investigate the the effect of a data loss in a wireless transmission when we post-process a time series. And these are my three VMS and, going, and we can compare them. And first, I'd like to say that the blue box itself is a custom-made MEMS VMS. The slam stick has both MEMS and piezoelectric and the piezoelectric VMS obviously would have piezoelectric accelerometer. They would each have their own tran data transfer method, Wi-Fi, USB, or LAN cable, to transfer data to a computer, and we can post-process this in Python. And in Python, we can use a vibration analysis to, to, to present data in time domain and frequency domain. 
but mostly we're focusing on frequency domain here because we want to detect the operating frequencies of these equipment. We have three tests. The first one being a control test to use a shaker in a vibration uh, testing table so that we can damn external vibration and noise. Because MEMS VMS have a high noise, we want to understand what we're trying to plug into this, what we're trying to measure. And we can use, uh, we can detect noise floor and put a sinusoidal input in this case. Furthermore, after the controlled laboratory tests, we can use a site condition to using a fan and a pump in UWA. And this allows us to measure vibration in site conditions. And our goal here is to detect the operating frequencies of these equipment and work within the mounting limitations in the pump, for instance. And while in the fan, what we can do is something interesting where we can apply clip weight and measure the vibration on the balance and the imbalance fan. Firstly, we measure the noise floor of the system and we use an averaging FFT algorithm to reduce the standard deviation of this noise. So you can see that, that um, the width reduces from 20 decibels from top to bottom down to something um, more readable so that we can see the peaks better. And the blue box here, which is a MEMS VMS, has the highest noise floor because of its resolution of 10 bits. The slam stick is somewhere in the middle which is using 10 and 16 bits, while the piezoelectric has the lowest noise floor because of its 24-bit resolution. It shows here that the, res the higher your resolution, the better your sensor, the, the better the VMS is, but it doesn't always guarantee that because you always have to account the, the, sensor, the sensor quality as well. You would have to use a good quality sensor with a good um, amount of um, resolution as well. You can't just match up a bad sensor and a high resolution because the sensor noise would dominate in that case. The vibration shaker experiment with the sinusoidal input shows us that we can detect the, uh, the peak frequency of vibration. And this is the same result when we apply it from five to 15,000 Hertz. And I'm showing you the 100 hertz result. And the vibration amplitude here is at least an order of magnitude above the noise floor here. And that is important. So we can, we can distinguish the peaks. And we allow um, a buffer even we don't use some averaging here. So this is a positive result in the vibration shaker experiment because all the, all the devices do the MEMS and the piezoelectric have comparable results? When you have a centrifugal fan test, this, is, this um, simulates a site condition. We can first measure the vibration when it's balanced. So that's when it's healthy. And then when we can, we can put a clip weight in one of the blades and create an imbalanced vibration. And plotting the frequency spectrum the lighter lines show the balanced fan, while the darker lines show the imbalanced fan. We can see that the delta, which is change in mag in the change in amplitude of 20 decibels here, that is one order of magnitude. So we just increase the amplitude at the operating frequency by 10 times. Okay. And we and we know that it's an operating frequency because we we have a variable frequency drive at 20 Hertz. The other result here is that we have comparable results with all of these VMS, whether if it's MEMS or piezoelectric. So that's a good result. And we can actually use, uh, we can use MEMS VMS here as a condition monitoring unit. In the pump test, this is where the MEMS VMS fails because of its high noise and low, re low resolution compared to the piezoelectric, it, can't, it can barely detect the operating frequency. You see 1x and a 2x here, the harmonics specifically. So this is the point where 
your MEMS VMS are limited because of the vibration amplitude of your equipment. And furthermore, if you use a single enclosure unit such as the blue box in the slam stick, you can only use that in flat surfaces because it's, it's, it's a big unit that um, you have to stick with a mounting type. And whereas the piezoelectric accelerometer, you can easily mount that in curved surfaces because of its low um, surface area to mount. And if we summarize all these performance, we can say that the MEMS VMS can perform well in, um, in vibration amplitude of at least 20 decibels above the noise floor. That's an order of magnitude. And we can only use it in flat surfaces. The limitation here is that we only use the, the VMS away from the resonant frequencies so that we don't get um, overestimation of the acceleration at that point. This is the subject of future work and we can do a hardware redesign of this VMS to avoid, um, to investigate further on the resonant frequencies of this. Moving on to the wireless data transfer. Um, the problem here is that you would have, you would incur data losses because of the UDP communication protocol. It's a fast data transfer, but unreliable. So think of it as if now I'm presenting to you, I'm hoping you are following so far because there is a chance with one-way communication that I cannot deliver the message successfully to you. And it can su succeed or fail. And when it fails, you cannot recover it. And you can use a two-way communication. It's much lower. Think of it as if I'm going to ask you a question and then I reply back. So there's a, like a form type of thing. And um, I can make sure that my message here in my thesis is successfully delivered to you. But unfortunately, that's not a case. And um, we want to investigate what would happen if we use UDP protocol. We have... Um, we have a sine wave here, friends, and this represents a, a typical vibration shaker experiment where we have 5Gs and 40 hertz. We sample it at 3,200 hertz and we induce a packet loss or data loss in blocks. And that, and when, and data loss is represented by zeros in these, in this case. And we can take the FFT of that to see the result. This blue curve here is our original signal, and that is and that has a noise floor because of the precision in the in the computer system, so single bit precision. And when we induce that data loss in the, in the form of zeros in some in some points of the sine wave, what we find is that we can still recover the peak frequency. However, we increase the noise floor to four, negative forty dB. And that it that introduces 10 milli g of noise, and if it, we if we compare this with our recent um, sorry the the previous results from our vibration shaker and the fan, the noise would dominate in this case, and we're not able to detect the operating frequency um, as much uh, as good as we would hope to. And we want to avoid this increase of noise just because of the data lock, the, the sample. And we can use a communication protocol such as TCP that allows us to provide a, the two-way communication. It's much more reliable, but it's slower. We expect this, but we haven't um, dealt with this. So this is the subject of a future work. If I summarize all of that, we can use a MEMS VMS when we have a vibration amplitude that is at least an order of magnitude above the noise floor and away from curved surfaces. And we, in wireless VMS, such as the blue box, we, want to, to, we don't want to use a UDP communication protocol because it, it um, allows us to get data sample with losses. When we post process that, we introduce more noise to the system. And this is where my future work comes in. We can do a hardware redesign to account for the resonant frequency and be able to mount it on curved surfaces. Can use a TCP protocol to mitigate data losses and an array of um, MEMS VMS because we can take advantage of its low costs. And we can improve on this better so that we can 
that this would slowly uh, uh, be used in the industry. And hopefully you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you.